Okay, do a quick little audio check. What's up, everybody? Good evening, afternoon, or morning, depending on where you're at. A couple of stories that I wanted to share with you guys. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty while starting up. I forgot I was connected to the VPN. Um, but a couple of crazy, weird stories. Make sure we're live here. Make sure we're live. Still says waiting for me. What? Maybe there's a delay. Hold on one second. Let's see. <laughs> it says I'm here, but I don't know. My doctor Terrible. requires knowing. That was weird. <clears throat> okay, now we're live. There you go. Make sure we're live. All right, yeah. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of technical difficulties. But we're here nonetheless. I have a couple of weird, creepy stories, some local, some not, and about men uh, targeting women, and in some cases, targeting them specifically for children. And one in particular is one local here to Florida, because it's believed this guy's done this multiple times. And it kind of goes with the theme with a lot of the stories that we've covered recently about these crazy guys, whether random. Or in a relationship, random like Naomi. Let me just silence this. Naomi or um, specific like Cassie, right? Uh, let me see. What's up? Welcome. Inga Lachola, Natty. If you guys can hit like to it, I'd appreciate that. Dreadhead, what's up, man? I, I haven't checked my email yet. I saw your comment where you said you sent me an email. Uh, I haven't checked it yet. Sorry, man. I'm going to get to it, though. Uh, and the, yeah, this is just kind of off the off the cuff stream. Um, I don't really have time to plan too much today, but I wanted to come in and check in and share some of this insanity and in just like a, a PSA. A husband killing his wife in front of her child at a Jewish community center. And we're now learning that is not the first time the suspects have been had a run in rather with the law. Local tens. This guy has a long, long, long history, and we're going to get into that as well. Roy Ramos is live to explain his dangerous past. Roy. Yeah, he does have a very violent criminal history. It dates back to 1994 with charges that include armed robbery to kidnapping, and the list goes on and on. He is now back behind bars, and you can now add a murder charge to his rap sheet. Good afternoon, Mr. Watts. 45-year-old Carl Watts Jr. faced a Miami-Dade County judge after police said he shot and killed his wife, 30-year-old Shandell Harris, Sunday. So you were arrested for one count of second-degree murder and one count of possession of a firearm, weapon, or ammunition uh, by a convicted felon. Investigators said it all happened at the Jewish Community Center near Northeast 189th Street and 25th Avenue while Harris was at her daughter's swim lessons. And he shot the victim multiple times. In the arrest report we obtained, it states Watts offered to pay Harris money to drop charges against him for stabbing her multiple times the day prior. When she refused to accept, he shot and killed her. So he stabbed her the day before. And so he, I, I think he wanted to try to pay her off to not report it. And she, I guess she didn't agree. And so then this guy shows up to a community pool and shoots this woman in front of her kid and her mother, the mother's mother. While well, Watts now faces a second degree murder charge, which may change. To me, it looks like there's probable cause for first degree murder. We've learned he has a lengthy criminal history. You may remember when we told you how he was a person of interest when his girlfriend, Trukita Scott, disappeared in June of 2014. While he was never arrested in that case, she has never been found. In July that same year, Fort Lauderdale police arrested him for attempting to kidnap an 18 year old girl at a bus stop. Fortunately, she got away. Damn. I found. <laughs> I didn't even hear about that one. Kidnapped never. June of 2014. The, I started looking at the list that we're going to go down a little bit. I tried to read it before we started, and uh, I don't even think I heard of this one. Maybe I, maybe I did read it, but I, what the hell? He's even on video. How many women can you kill and be suspected of? How many murders can you be? And you're just, oh, you're just not free. Live your life. Ah, no big deal. Oh, camera. Hey. While he was never arrested in that case, she has never been found. In July that same year, Fort Lauderdale police arrested him for attempting to kidnap an 18-year-old girl at a bus stop. Fortunately, she got away. Uh. 
I found Watts' violent past dates back to 1994 with charges that include grand theft, armed robbery, drug trafficking, and kidnapping. Told him, told he was him. in and out of prison from 2004 to 2007, but it is this brutal murder of his own wife that could now have him spending the rest of his days behind bars. I'm holding him with no bonds. So you may be asking yourself, why wasn't Watts arrested at the time he allegedly stabbed his wife the day prior to that shooting? Well, we reached out to City of Miami Police. They tell us that he had already left the scene by the time police officers arrived. Ah, uh, that's why. Okay, that makes sense. As for that second degree murder charge, right now we are working to find out if it will be changed to a first degree murder charge. I'll have more on that coming up on local. Is he out on bail yet? Did he bail out already? Probably bailed out already, right? Uh, Francis Facil, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. And Melissa, thank you for the uh, membership. So let's get into the article a bit. Just popping on to you know share some stories, some of the craziness. Um, and this one is a good article. Miami pool shooter eyed in third case, a 2009 murder had string of domestic violence arrests. He's been charged with murdering his wife execution style at a community pool in Northeast Miami Dade. He's been named a person of interest in the suspicious disappearance of an ex-girlfriend in 2014. And now Carl Monty Watts Jr. may again be in the crosshairs of police for an unresolved killing of yet another woman more than a decade ago, Vicki Simmons, which there's a clip I'm going to show you guys where the sister was talking recently. Um, who was discovered, Vicki Simmons, 25, who was discovered murdered in Biscayne Boulevard Motel in February 2009. Her sister, LaShawn Jones, told Miami Herald that Watts has Simmons' girlfriend. Watts was Simmons' girlfriend. I think she meant to say Simmons was Watts' girlfriend at the time. And the two had gotten into an argument shortly before she was discovered murdered. And while she said a Miami Day police detective told her at the time that Watts was the main suspect, there hadn't been enough evidence to charge him. If this case would have been solved a long time ago, there wouldn't have been more victims, Jones said. A Miami-Dade police spokesman, Alvaro Zabaleta, declined to say whether Watts was indeed a suspect or even a person of interest in the unsolved murder of Simmons, but he acknowledged on Tuesday that Miami-Dade cold, cold case detectives are revisiting the case. So I guess they told her personally, but they didn't announce it publicly. Possible, I don't know. What's up, you guys? Thanks for stopping by. Hit like, please. So Watts 45 remains in a Miami-Dade jail awaiting arraignment on a charge of second-degree murder with a deadly weapon. The Miami-Dade Police Public Defender's Office, which is representing him for now, declined to comment. Police say Watts shot and killed his wife, Shandell Harris, 30, in front of her horrified mother and daughter, as well as the other kids and parents at the pool. I mean, you must be like a crazed lunatic, unhinged just to go in the middle of the afternoon in front of kids, at pool, in front of everybody. And just, you know, blast your, your wife. I mean, no regard. I mean, I mean, you couldn't expect any less, right? Society, the police, everybody. He's been okay doing this his entire life besides doing it in front of a public crowd. Why would he think anything different? Shit, he's been getting away for so many years. He's done shit on camera. So, yeah, he's going to walk into a place like this. Maybe he was even surprised. Like, oh, wow, they actually did something this time. Holy crap. Right. Um, at the Michael and Russell Jewish Community Center on Sunday afternoon, one day earlier, Watts stabbed Harris when she threatened to leave him. And that's this is, you know, we talked about this multiple times. You know, I'm not an expert in this. but I have a little experience. I know friends and everything. The most dangerous time is when you're going to leave. And doing the threatened thing, doing out of anger and frustration, I understand you might want to do that, but it's really best to do it in secret, have a plan, have some friends, family, or somebody do it while the person's not there. I mean, heck, maybe even call the cops. This type of guy, though, he probably would have still found her somewhere, especially, you know, with the kids. I don't know. She reported the case to Miami police, but detectives hadn't yet tracked him down when he opened fire at the pool. Private security guards immediately detained Watts, who acknowledged he stabbed his wife, but invoked his right to remain silent about the shooting, according to Miami-Dade police arrest report. So this guy, 
Okay. His name was familiar to the families of other women who had been in tumultuous relationships with Watts. Watts had long been considered a person of interest in the unsolved disappearance of Fort Lauderdale's Chiquita Scott, who has been missing since she failed to pick up her two children from a daycare center in June 2014. She was last seen leaving her job at a U-Haul in Miami Gardens and heading to Liberty City to meet up with Watts. Her missing car was later found in Liberty City. Her father, Charles Scott, 52, said Watts acknowledged to the family that she visited his home to pick up money for their child. So he has a kid with this person, but denied having anything to do with her vanishing. Fort Lauderdale police in a statement released this week said it was aware of Watts latest case and our detectives are in contact with NDPD Miami Dade police. Miami Dade police was also the lead agency investigating the killing of Simmons who was found dead inside a sun and surf Inn on Biscayne Boulevard on February 18, 2009. Watts had been in a relationship with Simmons, according to Jones, her sister. At first Jones said she didn't think Watts had anything to do with her sister's demise until a couple of days later, she went to clean out Simmons apartment and thought his behavior was odd. Weirdo shit, right? There, she found Watts changing the locks on the apartment. Jones said he took her underwear and items of clothing. She noticed something else. I noticed none of his items were in the apartment. So. And then his son and surf in. So did he live with her there or not? And was he, did he took a, take all his things out? Um, Jones later learned from Simmons son that the two had argued frequently and had gotten into a fight shortly before she was killed. Pieces of a glass bottle he'd smashed on the ground were still in her apartment when Jones went to clean up. She said Watts was never charged in Simmons killing or the disappearance of Scott, but he also had a long history of felony arrest dating back to the 1990s with many allegations of domestic abuse and kidnapping. So, I mean, it's important for, you know, people to kind of report this stuff and do something because not only is it possibly saving yourself, but a long list of other potential people in early 2003, Watts was arrested for aggravated kidnapping with a weapon, armed robbery and armed burglary. He and another man were accused of robbing a man at a Miami Springs hotel. The case was dropped after defense witnesses, including a girlfriend testified that he was at a family party that day. Families cover for him. Families covering and protected him. Little did they know all this shit this guy's been... Maybe they did know. I don't know. Simmons was actually listed as a witness in the case, although it was unclear if she was an alibi witness. Wow. So the woman that's missing and, and killed is Simmons. Yeah. The woman that's later killed was a witness for this guy and potentially maybe she even covered for him. And this guy repays her back. Then in 2004, he was sentenced to three years in state prison for grand theft, organized fraud, and a weapons charge. He later escaped custody, even escaped, and was returned to prison until 2007. That fall after his release, Watts was arrested for two domestic violence cases involving another woman with whom he had five children. Bro, come on. Five children. So these, these, uh, I guess this is where the ladies are going. I don't know. Damn. Incredible. Five children. Okay. On, a, on October 18, 2007, the woman was leaving for work when Watts forced her into his car and struck her several times. According to an arrest report, the woman, while trying to escape, stabbed Watts with a pen, which he took away and in turn stabbed her in the ribs. Jeez. He eventually dropped her off at North Shore Hospital the next day. The woman was having the locks changed on her apartment door when Watts showed up and forcefully removed her and placed her inside his vehicle. Inside his vehicle, the report said. After yelling and intimidating her in the car, he eventually let her out. Police eventually arrested Watts on charges of kidnapping and aggravated battery, but prosecutors could not make the case stick. The reason the woman repeatedly refused to cooperate with prosecution. This is important too. see. I mean, I, I hope that, um, 
to people out there. I mean, I know it's tough. But maybe you feel guilty, afraid. Maybe you, I don't know what, you know, I don't know the psychology behind it. But, um, you know, these people just keep getting away with it. The Herald is not naming her because she could not be reached for comment. And, you know, I don't know how these women feel after the fact. It's probably got to be eerie, scary, crazy just to think that, you know, the person you were having issues with, the person that was beating you, the person you got kids with, went and killed potentially several other women. A month before Scott disappeared, well, even this person, in 2014, Watts had also been arrested and charged with battery and false imprisonment for attempting to force a teenage girl at a Broward County bus stop. This is what it, we just saw on video into his car. According to an arrest report, he acknowledged that he spoke to the girl because she looked young and sexy, but denied attacking her. Watts said that he normally picks up young, pretty girls when he sees them on the side of the road. He said that he is lonely because his girlfriend broke up with him and he just wanted companionship. He stated that he is very persistent when it comes to picking up girls and that he doesn't give up easily, the report said. Some of the ladies would call this, I guess, dedication or consistency or whatever. At the time, he was on federal probation for weapons charge in Broward case. In the Broward case, he ended up pleading no contest and got a credit for 335 days served in jail. After Scott vanished, Watts served 11 months in prison for violating his federal probation. How, how, how nuts, how nuts is that? And this story is just a little blip. Nobody gives a shit. Just a little bit. Bloop. But I actually got decent views here. But this, this story, I mean, who knows how many other women? Now, this is a clip uh, where you can see the sister, LaShawn Jones, speaking on behalf of uh, Vicki Simmons, a 26-year-old, where she believes... Her sister was murdered. Her sister was murdered, but the killer was never caught, got away. And she believes it's linked to this guy. Now on Just One Station, it has been more than a decade since a woman's body was found in a South Florida motel. Now her family is wondering if there's a connection to another killer crime. Three women missing or dead, and they all dated the same man. Now loved ones asking for answers. Seven's Jeff Lennox reports. The positive memories alive. Holding on to memories of 26 year old Vicki Simmons, LaShawn Jones says her sister was murdered and the killer was never caught. I feel like my sister's story has went cold for so many years, I think like 13 years, but it's like now I feel like it, this is the time. Now is the time because she says her sister has one thing in common with two other women missing or murdered. They were all in relationships with 45 year old Carl Watts. I know it wasn't a good relationship and she really wanted out. Jones says back in February of 2009, her sister was living with Watts. Came to my home and asked me, have I seen her? Then it was like, no, something's not right. Not long after, on February 18th, 2009, she was found dead inside of a room at the Sun and Surf Inn on Biscayne Boulevard. Years after that, you just need answers. In June of 2014, a woman named Trakita Scott broke off a relationship with Carl Watts, then went missing. Our case still open. June 25th would be eight years. Fast forward to Sunday, April 3rd. Person shot, not breathing, 189, Police say Carl Watts shot and killed his wife inside a Northeast Miami-Dade Community Center a day after she threatened divorce. So you were arrested for one count of second degree murder. Now he's locked up with no bond. I'm glad they got him. I'm glad they got him. Fort Lauderdale police are calling him a person of interest in the disappearance of Chiquita Scott. And Miami Day police say they're taking another look at the death of Vicki Simmons. This guy could be a serial killer, right? His time is up. Before I leave this earth, I'm going to help my sister uh, case stay alive. That has to be justice done. Jeff Lennox, 7 News. Well, if you have any information on these <clears throat> investigations, you're being asked to contact Crime Stoppers either in Miami Dade or Broward County. Um, okay. So that was the one of the stories that I kind of wanted to touch on. There's a few more. Uh, 
We Weirdo turn to this stuff. story now. A con Let me close this out. This is another recent story as well. This is Detroit. And I think it's another case of a man getting to know or adult woman just to get to their kids. And I got another story like that as well. Just bizarre. Uh, let's get it here over here. Gay of Detroit being called a serial child rapist. His victims as young as three years old. Police say he'd befriend or date women only to gain access to their. Bro, I never even knew that was a thing. I mean, you always hear like, be careful. You know, some people are getting into these bad relationships. Watch your kids. You know, and then you think that like, you know, this person that's not the biological father of your child nothing against parents that aren't that do a great job but people think that oh they just lost their temper they just whatever but there's people out there specifically i want to get this mother so i can get to the kids children it's heart-wrenching it is it's it's sickening i mean when you when you read these reports of uh, these children these babies being taken advantage of Five victims under 15 years old as young as three little girls and little boys allegedly Girls and boys. Sexually abused by Dietrich Gay. The state of Michigan versus Dietrich DeMonte Gay. 28 year old Gay, who has not been cooperative with Detroit police in court last Friday, visibly distraught as a judge handed down his charges. These are very serious assaultive allegations. The victims appear to be family members of girlfriends or acquaintances. And he has, uh, this individual has an opportunity to be alone with these children and he's taking uh taking advantage totally captain kimberly blackwell with dpd's special victims unit says his crime span from 2021 to early this year and happened in the areas of the eighth and ninth precincts nothing specific given about location to protect the victims many of us have our own children and i i always say that you look at every case as if this is your family member gay came on dpd's radar a couple months ago after one of the alleged victims was seeing a counselor and revealed to them the alleged sexual abuse. After that, investigators pieced together this tragic story. We're going to ensure that he's going away for a very long time. Dietrich Gay apparently has a lengthy criminal past when it comes to domestic violence. This is the first time he's been charged with criminal sexual conduct. Jessica Dupnak, Fox 2 News. So the first time somebody reported it. And uh, I was trying to find a little bit of information on this, but there is not really a single gun. Much. I was trying to see anything else on Dietrich Gay. I guess because of the kids, they're like underage and stuff. Let me take out this other article real quick. If there's any background. No, yeah, it's very like limited right now. Pretty sick stuff. Um. Allegedly abused at least five boys and girls under the age of 15. So, yeah, man. I mean, you just, these days, I mean, I mean, it's been like that forever, but these people want to get around your kids and, yeah, I'll watch them and all this stuff. <clears throat> all right, let's do another one. And this one has a presser. I'm just pulling it up for you guys. All right, let me take you to this article first, the People article. And it's just so you know, so you be aware. Okay. Have you guys heard of this story yet? There's another reason. These are all recent stories. This is not like years ago, months ago. All recent. Okay. Man charged with child sexual assault targeted single moms on dating apps to get close to their kids. Police, I guess, say. Authorities say that 42-year-old Bifano, I don't know, Adolfo Jimenez went by the name Harley on dating sites and specifically looked for a woman with children. Okay. A Texas man has been charged with sexual assault of a child and authorities allege that he has been targeting single moms through dating apps and asking to spend time with their children. Who does that? Hey, can I hang out with your kids? Yeah. According to a media release from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, a 42 year old Pefino Adolfo Jimenez went by the name Harley on a dating sites and specifically looked for women with children. The press release does not specify which dating sites Jimenez allegedly used. 
I mean, that's right here. Harley, Texas. You matched 46 days ago. Willis, Texas, active yesterday. This is from people.com. According to charging affidavits obtained by click to Houston.com, cops first learned of Jimenez after a 17 year old girl came forward and claimed that he sexually assaulted her when she was 13. The girl, who was the daughter of Jimenez's ex girlfriend, told school counselors and later police that Jimenez was drunk for four years ago when he pinned her to a bed and raped her. Police alleged that Jimenez corroborated much of the girl's account but denied the sexual assault. During the course of the investigation into that alleged sexual assault, police questioned Jimenez. During their interview, he allegedly admitted to using the dating apps to target single moms. People confirms that Jimenez is already on probation in Galveston County for online solic solicitation of a minor, and he is married. He's married. No surprise, I guess, right? Jimenez has not entered a plea and online arrest records do not reflect an attorney authorized to speak on his behalf. Bond has not yet been set. Investigators believe that Jimenez may have several victims. Authorities urge anyone who may have met with him or allowed him to contact their children, call Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. Okay, be careful who you're letting your kids with. I mean, I think that's like obvious to say that. It's not anything to say that every day, right? Before the presser, uh, this one had a, a tiny little bit more information. Uh, and it says here that I guess he would come home with a six pack of beer or his girlfriend would have already won for him at the house. So she's over there. Hey, yeah, have a drink, hang out with the kids. Investigators noted that during the entire conversation, Jimenez's demeanor was vague. They said he cooperated the girl's entire story, but denied the act of actually sexually assaulting her. And, uh, when investigators asked, why she would make up the story. Jimenez allegedly said it was because she, because he has not been in her life. Investigators determined there was enough probable cause to move forward with filing charges. Uh, we're going to listen to this real quick, see what they have to say. Spencer with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, and thank you for Mary being Mary. here. Today we're here to discuss the arrest of Epifanio Adolfo Jimenez, who, who was arrested for aggravated sexual assault of a child. Uh, by the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. Uh, what we can tell you is during the investigation, it was discovered that Mr. Jimenez was targeting women and children through a dating app in which he was asked to spending time with the children while talking to the females through the dating app. Uh, we can say that one app that he was using, he used the alias Harley uh, as his uh, profile name on the application. Uh, right now we're asking, um, we have some information that could lead us to believe that um, Mr. Jimenez has possibly has other victims uh, due to his reach with social media and the dating app. So we're seeking the help of the public, anybody that has been left alone with Mr. Jimenez or children that have been left alone to uh, contact the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. Do you know how about long the time that he's been on the dating app to kind of, was it, has it been like a grooming situation where he started and then, or was, do you have a timeline of maybe how long he's been doing this? Uh, well, we can say that the sexual assault occurred uh, several years ago. So there is a, the potential that this was uh, over years of time that he's been out there doing this. So the current offense that he's been arrested for was uh, due to years have passed since then, since the offense occurred. This is certain offense that we're talking yes. about right now. Yes. Can you give us a specific year? Uh, I, I don't have the year. I just know that it was several years ago. And, and the outcry was made? Yeah, so what we can tell you is that ju a juvenile uh, made an outcry that she was uh, sexually assaulted by the suspect. Uh, the victim's mother reported that to law enforcement, and based on the detective interview and the evidence gathered, a judge issued a warrant for his arrest. So, and during the investigation, that's when detectives also found out that Mr. Menez was on probation for out of Galveston County for online solicitation of a minor. Can you talk to us just about, um, I know you can't give us names or identities, but how he ended up with this uh, minor uh, alone? Uh, I, I can't go into details without without divulging some of the stuff that shields them. Okay. But the prior, it sounds like he does. He did have priors in in, in Galveston County with for similar children involved that, crimes. It was already on probation for that. That's correct. Yes, and he was already on probation for a similar thing. I guess like you could do whatever with kids, and they just give you like a little slap on the wrist. 
Uh, Inga Carlson, thank you so much for the super chat. That's what I was actually laughing about. Mel, you've lost enough weight to remove some links on your watch. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, I've been working hard. It's actually gotten really loose. My watch. I appreciate that. Been uh, every day trying to exercise and eat right. Healthy. And uh, yeah, I'm still going though. I'm not stopping. <laughs> and then now this new offense came up. So uh, based on the reach, based on the social media access that he has, and based on some of the other evidence that we have through uh, digital evidence and so forth, we believe that there could be other victims out there uh, that Mr. Jimenez may have, have hurt. So we're seeking the media's help and public help getting the message out to have anybody that has been left alone with Mr. Jimenez or anybody that may have some information regarding this to contact the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. What would you say to, to parents? Um, dating apps are now being used regularly, it's normal. Uh, what would you say to somebody who's out there dating uh, about bringing someone who is unknown to them, who they don't, maybe don't know uh, exactly who they are around their children and what you would advice you would give law enforcement? Well, I would say that regardless if it's bringing them around their children or themselves, that they need to be very cognizant of their of the person that they're talking to. And, you know, if there's uh, a gut feeling that something's wrong, it's probably wrong, you know. But uh, there's numerous commercial databases that you can use that can you can check the backgrounds on individuals, verify, you know, go slow, there's no rush or hurry, meet them in public places, video chat with them before you give, you know, share information, um, you know, continue the... There's a lot of fake profiles too on those apps. A lot of scam stuff on those apps too. Texting and, and dialogue with them until you feel comfortable with them. And then, you know, start the face-to-face, -face, you know, meetings in public places before. And then obviously, I think parents know best, you know, bringing their kids around uh, someone that they just met when that's an appropriate time for them. But there's, there's a lot of resources online. There's a lot of things you can do before you get to that first step. And uh, obviously with, the, with COVID and and uh, the restrictions that had been there, a lot of people have resorted to online, uh, you know, dating and messaging. So it's important to be very, very careful when uh, using those apps. Do you know how long this relationship may have lasted? Was it, you know, one or two dates? Was it, did it turn into uh, a, a, an actual relationship? So it, it wasn't an actual relationship uh, that happened there. There, there was some um, familiarity, familiarity between the victim and the suspect, so um, that's kind of all I can say with that. So they felt comfortable bringing? Yes. And also too, I guess, with, as far as you're, you're calling for more victims, do we think that he has spread all across, you know, lines from Harris and Montgomery, kind of all across the area? He had priors in Galveston, I mean, I <coughs> well, that, that, You're exactly right. I mean, the online dating apps and or his reach, we, we you can reach anywhere by setting your geographical area on the app. So, you know, mm -hmm. you pull in more, as we would say, as victims or prey, you know, it could expand his area quite, quite large. So that's why we wanted to get the message out to try to hit not just Montgomery County, and obviously we have a case in Galveston County where he's on probation, but Harris County and the surrounding areas, uh, there's just no telling where his reach is, so we want to make sure we're extremely thorough. He says, uh, Ikemal, you should interview some of the YouTube pedo hunters i actually did one guy two or three well that sounds kind of funny uh i actually interviewed one guy like two or three times and uh he got canceled though it was a really i actually he's the guy's from texas he got canceled pretty bad i, th I don't know if he's still around alex it was a whole situation because he actually caught another youtuber that would actually be a really interesting video f if you guys wanted to watch sometime mdp what's the guy's name Oh no, EDP, EDP, four four five. That guy got caught up meeting or soliciting a minor, and this guy, this is the guy here. There's a full video. It's pretty graphic, <laughs> to say the least. This is the guy right here, Alex. Um, I used to talk to him when he was smaller, and the guy blew up. He blew up uh, because he was kind of it was like an entertainment thing, and he was using remarks that people found uh they found it racist and offensive but he was kind of like all the way around um but i i've spoken to him many times i know he had a good heart but yeah that guy he got canceled he might have another channel or not the white guy here but he caught this big ass youtuber i mean they they have text messages everything at one point this youtuber guy the big youtuber no pun intended he um told the the decoy something about like oh do you want to see my 
feces. And the guy actually sends a picture of his feces to the, the person he thinks is underage. Just weird, weird stuff. So the whole EDP situation, this was a while back. I guess almost a year ago. I don't know when. Is he finally in prison? He actually got arrested. This whole situation was nuts. They, they kind of like canceled each other almost. You know? Crazy story. Had this victim done their research like you suggested, would they have been tipped off? I, it's it's hard to say. I mean, that would be me uh, armchair quarterbacking a victim, and I, I'm not going to do that. No, you know, uh, he, he has obviously has a prior criminal record. So had she had they done in this particular case, had they done their research, which is that record? Would I, public? That record is public for for anyone to have seen. That's why it's very important to do your own investigation, your own background into individuals that you meet online, use online dating apps. Or just you know meet somebody in a, at a grocery store. You know just be diligent when you're he doing. He also it. said he wasn't using his his right. His that's correct. Yeah, and that should be another you know flag if somebody's using a first name. And of course, for safety reasons, I I would expect everybody to use maybe a first name or an alias when they start out. But as you become uh, closer to them or familiar with them, you should make sure that you start identifying them, get more information, then do your checks on that, and and make sure that they're you, you know that everything checks out. And most recently, this victim, the, the, the son or daughter of this, uh, of this woman, uh, had come forward. That, is that why this is being brought to light most recently? Do you know when they reported this? It was just recent that they reported it. So it was recently it was put in. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy with the pedo hunters. I used to talk to Alex about that, his thoughts. And it, it was, I used to have a friend that we would constantly go back and forth on what they were doing she didn't think what they were doing was good and that um it was helping predators like get away i i liked what they were doing i mean not not all of them you know some of them go about things not so great there's a guy uh anxiety wait an anxiety war an anxiety war i used to watch that guy too he did a really good job like very professional i don't know if he still does it but it's a really dangerous type of content to do too like these people can come for you they threaten you I remember Alex had a bunch of cease and desist. I'm pretty sure he's had threats on his life. Um, people offer to pay you off to take the video down. An anxiety, war, an anxiety war. He's a good guy to watch. I used to be subbed. I don't know what happened, but I've um, been doing it for a long time. Put in the hands of our of our law enforcement agents, and then we immediately took action. Our our detectives. Uh, Were able to locate him. Yes, yes. It was very quickly. Uh, we, we knew the identity of him. It wasn't that we wouldn't. The victim knew the identity of him. So we were able to, you know, gather the forensic evidence. We, we scheduled the victim to, for a forensic interview to make sure that her, she was taken care of and then had the victim uh, interviewed by specialist. And then we corroborated a lot of what she said uh, based on evidence. And then obviously a judge agreed with us and issued a warrant. So the victim made the other just recently, but Bridget. the assault took place maybe years ago? That's correct. Um, and, and the, the suspect that he is right now locked up in Montgomery County Jail? That's correct. Um, I was reading the affidavit again without going into detail about the victim. Um, she made the outcry, um, but she may have been uh, mom or somebody in the family may have found out about the Galveston stuff and that, that was an alarm. Did, did I read that correctly? I, I, I have not read the affidavit. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's correct or not. I've not read the affidavit. I just have what I what was given to me. All right. Is that a good question? Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. And so that was it for that. Um, so that was a Texas story. Um, you know, and with this, they didn't release. There was quite a bit, but because it's an underage person, I guess they're limited. But yeah, married man on these dating apps targeting single mothers specifically with the intentions to get with the kids you know um these two other ones are kind of short but these are both of these next two are florida stories you know this video is not going to get monetized <laughs> but uh it's i thought it were Silvio sent this to me. This kid looks super, super disturbed. And on to a crime alert in Hollywood here. That's where police arrested a teenager for allegedly possessing child pornography. The 19-year-old is accused of producing some of that salacious material himself. Local 10's Alex Finney is live down with... Producing some of the salacious material 
himself. The disturbing details, Alex. And you know, Calvin, you said it so perfectly there. This is just so disturbing. I mean, we're talking about Hollywood. No, <laughs> my place. Children just as young as four years old. How do you even do that, yo? Like, Police just... they got a tip back in January, and well, what they found, just not okay. Uh, Mr. Daniel DeRocher, nineteen-year-old Daniel DeRocher appeared in court Thursday for allegedly engaging in child pornography. This is exclusive video of the raid obtained by Local 10, showing officers executing a search warrant on the Drocher's Hollywood home in the 1400 block of North 46th Avenue. Law enforcement found 125 images involving uh, some images of... That's true, Steph, but I see all the... If I see all the news channels, people that are... They always get their stuff thing, no ads, then I know it's not, it's not going to probably... Well, you never know. You never know. The allegations are disturbing. According Context does matter on YouTube. According to the arrest form, there were chats dating back to December of 2021, and the content included toddler age children, some between four and six years old, in their undergarments. Yeah, I know the family well. And I hope and pray that they get through this. I know this is a tough situation for them. Ralph Dixon was shocked to hear about this. He knows the Derocher family well and lives right next door. They're nice people. I've, they've, I've been to barbecues with them and things like that. They are very nice people. Derocher admitted to masturbating. Bro, when I saw this picture, I was like, wow. Dating to the images, which he also said were saved on his iPhone 6. The pictures and videos include children engaging in various sex acts. In January of this year, authorities say they received a tip about the disturbing material circulating on a messenger service. We stopped by the home Thursday, but no one came to the door. He has been charged with multiple counts of possession of child pornography and compiling child pornography onto a computer. And DeRocha, we know, is being held on a $45,000 bond. Live in Hollywood tonight, Alex Finney. Local that was that one, and there was another one. And again, these are all recent. This was March 31st, 2022. I talk to Silvio about these stories sometimes. This, is, you know, this was a cop. Everybody's like, not everybody, but cops, kids, everybody's downloading and doing this stuff, I guess. And they're over here trying to put up a fight in court, too. We hear a little bit of it. Paul Mumford faced a Tampa judge, although she couldn't really see him. She did, however, get plenty of FaceTime with his lawyer, who was vigorously defending. That's what money gets you. Defending his client. And maybe, maybe status, too. He's with 100 counts, yes. right? That's abusive. That's vindictive. Mumford, a retired Tampa police officer, faces 100 counts of child pornography following his arrest yesterday. After receiving a tip in 2021, police searched Mumford's home and seized his personal devices. Officers mm. say they found dozens of child porn files. Despite that, his lawyer asked for a low bond, arguing the evidence against him is weak. But the judge disagreed. But we're here on probable cause, and there's probable cause for what came before me. So it's not three or four counts. It clearly says that they found some. I, I agree with that. Uh, but it doesn't say what devices they were found on. But it also says... Imagine trying to argue this, right, as a, as a lawyer, a pornography job. You know. It also says that they found it on... It says it found it on multiple devices, and that your client lied to the police and said that he didn't even have internet access after a fiery exchange between the two the judge pointed out a nagging concern she had and i don't want to be vindictive because he's a former cop it gravely concerns me that he might have had access to some of this because of this position as a police officer and that was kind of interesting to me when she said that that it gravely concerns me that he may have may have access to some of this because of his position as a police officer like what did he leverage that to somehow get more of these photos like his position i, I don't know how he would do that you know but but i'm going to treat him like i do everybody else that comes in here on these charges and with that bond was set at five hundred thousand dollars the former police hmm. officer never said a word gloria gomez fox 13 news it'll be out Um, uh, one last final thing that I have queued up and this one, 
It has nothing to do with all these crazy people. But I just, if you guys heard about the, I believe with the 14 year old that fell on that ride, the free fall ride, uh, Icon Park, I think it was Orlando, Florida, you know, he was on this ride. I, I guess they're saying he was, should have never been let on the ride. He was too heavy for the ride. And I don't know exactly the mechanic or what happened with the latch or whatever, but people never cease to try to take advantage of a situation. Of course, even with a 14 year old falling to his death and all this stuff, woman claiming to be related to boy who fell from ride has no ties to the family investigation shows. So she's out there preaching and hollering and talking to people, talking to the news and you ain't got nothing to do with this. Nothing. Eyewitness News has uncovered a woman who has claimed to be a family member and spokesperson for the 14-year-old who fell and died on that ride at Icon Park. Actually has no ties to the family. That's her in the Nike sweatshirt. The woman who said her name is Shay Johnson has been claiming she is the cousin of Tyree Sampson. The woman's been holding news conferences, hugging people. Holding news conferences? Collecting petition signatures and leading a vigil outside the free fall ride, conducting lots of interviews. And now the Orange County Sheriff's Office says Samson's mother told detectives she doesn't even know who this person who claims to be Shay Johnson is. Attorneys representing the family also told us none of the family members know Johnson. The sheriff's office is not aware of any crimes being committed at this point, like collecting funds. And late tonight, how about this twist? The woman's employer, Flash Dancers Bar in Orlando on or Orange. Yeah, they put her job out too. Blossom Trail told us in a statement tonight that they have terminated her employment. Ooh, there you go. Tomalo. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Susan Shaw. And I'm Michelle DeSelms. Off the top tonight, we are hearing from a homeowner who shot and killed a man who was trying to break into his house. This happened overnight near Byron Center along the Kent Allegan County line. All right. News 8's Joe LaFergie talked to that homeowner who takes us through the ordeal. Joe. Sue Michelle Allen Leonard says he warned oh. the man breaking into his home to go away, that he had a gun. But he says the armed man just kept coming. Well, he had to do it. There was no way around it. Yeah. Absolutely no way around it. It began when Alan Linhart found a man trying to break into his truck as it sat in the driveway of his home on 108th Street in Byron Township. It ended in a matter of minutes with the suspect dead of a gunshot wound. A shot Linhart says was fired in defense. It was around midnight when Leonard heard a commotion outside and found this man, 39-year-old Christopher Worth, trying to break into the truck. We yelled at him to go away. He proceeded to advance on us. Investigators say Worth had stolen at least one vehicle in Allegan County earlier last night. When the vehicle broke down near Leonard's oh. home, Detective Boy Worth went looking for another one to steal. When he failed to leave the driveway, Leonard says he closed the door, called 911, and grabbed a shotgun from a gun Steve cabinet. Inside, and then he went through my back door and approached us up the back steps. I told him to go away. I have a gun on you. And Leonard says Worth kept coming. The door at the top of the stairwell was barricaded, and he was pushing that in and kept smashing it in. And then he started shooting at me. And bullets going past your head like that. That's when Leonard shot back, killing Worth. Investigators say Worth was a parole absconder with a long criminal history dating back to the early 2000s, with charges ranging from armed robbery to drug possession to arson. Detectives are looking into other crimes he may have been involved with. It certainly would be something we're going to vet. Um, this this person has a pretty substantial. Uh, one of the things too, just a final final for anybody that was following the story. I think I thought I heard both of these people died. Though, uh, has anybody heard of the Ron Ronnie Barker and Beverly Barker? That was one of the stories I was getting ready to queue up and do, but then I heard this morning that they were found. They went missing in Nevada. I wonder if I could find a quick little video. Um, update. Mm. It's a, it's a, when I first heard of the story, it was very confusing to me, though, the timeline and the dates and everything. Let me see if I can uh, find a clip. <clears throat> I 
Whoa. Somebody just showed me. Oh, I'm just seeing this now. Somebody in the comment section, I, I guess they're talking about this guy, Carl Watts Jr. Somebody, I think, said, I survived him. He put a gun to my chest twice. I knew the next day I had to call. Now, I f now I'm free and better off. Storm flew in 97. I don't know if that's you're talking about that guy. Holy crap. I just survived. We want to get right to a breaking update on a story Arizona's family has been following all day. This missing couple from Indiana who is on So the woman's still alive? On their way to Arizona has been found. And sadly, Ronnie Barker was found dead. This according oh, okay. to his nephew. Our Brianna Whitney has been following this all day and new information just in now. Just in now and it's been unfolding as the day has gone on. So this is truly a sad update tonight. The nephew of Ronnie and Beverly Barker posting the update on his Facebook page this evening. Travis Peters has been posting updates publicly there all week to keep those concerned about the couple up to date. And tonight he shared the sad news. His uncle Ronnie was found dead. His aunt Beverly was found alive and airlifted to a Reno hospital. He said he doesn't know where they were found or details about Ronnie's death. There's obviously still a lot of mystery as to how we got here. Let's take a look at what we know. It is literally like they fell off the face of the earth, like they just vanished. The Barker's daughter, Jennifer Whaley, says the last time anyone heard from her parents was nine days ago on March 27th. The couple was on a trip in Oregon visiting their grandchildren. They left there on March 25th and headed to Tucson, but they vanished somewhere in Nevada. Today, April 5th, their family posting this on their Facebook page that the Barker's RV had been found, but no signs of them or the white Kia they were yeah. towing. To give you an idea of just how rural this area is where that RV was found, we're going to zoom into Nevada here. It was found, according to the family, near Silver Peak, west of that, somewhere along this mountain range. That Facebook post said they found that RV in mud somewhere up on a mountain. We don't have any more details than that, but just to give you a look at how rural. Wow. In mud up on the mountain. This area is there are 200 people that live in this small mining town. Now the Esmeralda County Sheriff's Office will not confirm that the RV has been found, but they also wouldn't tell us if they're still looking for it or not. We called to get more clarification and they told us to stop calling. The Barker's last call was to their Tucson friends they were meeting up with. My parents were supposed to meet them um, in Tucson on Tuesday evening, March the 29th. Like that's when they were supposed to be pulling into the campgrounds there in Tucson. They didn't show up. This is what we know about their last known sightings, according to both their family and law enforcement and where they were supposed to go. This was the path the Barkers were supposed to take from the start of their trip, Albany, Oregon, down to Tucson. So what we know from family is they were supposed to be staying in mm. the Fallon. Fallon, Fernley. All these locations are now ringing in my head because of uh, Naomi. Reno, all this whole Nevada area area. But instead of that, their cell phone ping was last here near Dyer, Nevada, next to the California border. <laughs> From there, we know, according to the family, their last known location was in Looning, Nevada. That was the last time their RV was caught on surveillance camera before they disappeared. This is where their trip was supposed to go from there. They were supposed to get to the Nellis Air Force Base just north of Las Vegas to check into a campsite. They never did that. And then from there, they are supposed to continue all the way down to Tucson, Arizona to meet their friends. All cell phone uh, pings, everything stopped on the 27th. Obviously, a lot of bizarre details and odd locations here. We called the Esmeralda County Sheriff's Office again tonight. They told us they are not able to confirm the details of what the family is saying right now. But the Nye County Sheriff's Office, who is assisting Esmeralda, confirmed the couple has been located and is no longer considered missing. But no other information was released tonight. Jamie mm -hmm. Whitney. So and what they're saying online. Um, Bridget sent some stuff from Twitter. They're saying that uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, they said that Ron Ronnie passed away. 
also saying, let me see a couple of things. I, this story, when I first looked at it, I was kind of confused at all the details, just the timeline. And then at one point there was a confusion with the time zone. And so the times were kind of mixed up, kind of. It, it was actually, I forgot what time it was supposed to be. It says, Ronnie and Beverly tried sending a help text with coordinates due to coverage it didn't send until Beverly was airlifted or belong or belongings were brought down to the mountain. Brought down the mountain. No Sheriff Elgin. You didn't look everywhere. So it looks like there's kind of drama going on. Or, or it seems like. <clears throat> or just um contradictions. Let me see what else if there's anything. And, and Beverly's in the hospital. Okay. And so they're not really saying much else after that. I don't know. Suspicious. They just get stuck in the mud and then they try to go for help. Couples abandoned RV was located in a muddy mountainous terrain near Silver Peak. Their nephew, Travis Peters, said in Facebook post, the Kia car had been towing behind the RV. Oh, okay. Had been removed by the time the rescuers searched the area. It wasn't clear how far away the couple were found, but their family believes they would have set off looking for help in the secondary vehicle after the RV became bogged down. Oh, because the mud. Okay. Hours after the couples were located, their children received a text from one of their phones asking for help wow so maybe it was a situation where they like got stuck and stranded yeah mary hey mary mary says they're saying no foul play involved okay hmm oh this is the rv right here the couple's rv reportedly got stuck in the mud a single text message was received to ronnie and beverly's daughter he said that text message was trying to send out and I can only assume that Beverly or Bev was airlifted to the hospital or perhaps their belongings were brought down to the mountain and me that message finally came through. But now we know it arrived too late. Beverly was airlifted to a renal hospital where she's is still undergoing treatment. Her exact condition wasn't immediately known. It is not yet clear when her husband died. Authorities had previously revealed during their search that the Barkers both suffered from diabetes and Ronnie had also previously battled cancer. The couple who were due to return to Indianapolis this week had set off on a cross country road trip last month and were en route to meet friends in Tus oh, I'm not even gonna Arizona. <laughs> Toucan, Arizona, right? When they disappeared. I was just thinking of all the people in the comments after they're gonna get me. They were reported missing by the children after they failed to meet with their friends. Damn. Sad outcome. Hopefully she survives. Um, and that's it, man. Thank you guys so much for joining. Just kind of off the cuff. Want to check in and say hi with you guys. Let me see this tweet real quick. Um, and uh, I couldn't come on earlier because I used up all my notifications yesterday for the 24 hours. So I just wanted to come in this evening, but save the rest of the notifications for tomorrow. Oh, and uh, Zanime, thank you for the super chat. Zanime says, Missy Mel looking good. Thank you. We should do a Ukraine talk. Oh, Lord, don't say that. I'll help you so you won't get canceled. We should do that. I hope you're doing safe. I know you've been traveling all over and you went to go help out. So I say we should do that. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It didn't work out so well. I don't know. <laughs> the last two times. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of things coming up that I don't know the dates for. The Johnny Depp. Okay, so the Johnny Depp thing is coming up, an Amber Heard trial. I don't. I guess that's gonna be live. Um, Nicholas Cruz is actually happening now. They're currently doing like the jury selection. So I was like, that might be interesting just to pop in. Like I'd want to see opening arguments. They're not there yet. Nicholas Cruz is that Florida school shooter, right? Florida. Um, I don't know when the Crumleys are coming back. 
there's a bunch of stuff that I don't know just slipped my mind. But there's a lot of things coming. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we might do the burst that you need to do fun and use that uh, thing again. Those are fun. Well, it depends what kind of fun and use because when I played the clips, that's what got me the strike. Johnny Depp. Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> Um. Oh, the the interview thing has been kind of fun too. A lot of people like that. Like on the weekends when we watch uh interrogations, that's a really popular one. But with the interrogations, I feel like we have to do funny ones. I don't think people want to be sad and depressed watching horrible, like depressing. You know, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing now. <laughs> but um, usually those are we kind of want to do it for fun. I think. Okay, Zanime sounds good. Yeah, I hope you're doing well. None. Nicholas Cruz. Watch me stay here for another two hours. I'm not going to. I'm just kidding. But um, I actually saw they were live today. They were live today. I just didn't think it was really. I didn't have any notifications, but I also didn't think it was. I mean, I don't know what's going on. It's the. Let me see. Today was day three. One day or jury selection begins in trial. I'm thinking maybe if the, first, the the day they do the opening statements or arguments or whatever they call it, we can maybe watch that. It might be kind of interesting just to see what they have to say. All right. Yeah. You guys have a good night. Please hit like on the way out. Appreciate it. Subscribe. To, uh, turn on the bell notifications. And uh, yeah, let's begin May 21st, I think. Who's that? Came out, check out the juvenile fight in Cincinnati on WLTV. Juvenile fight. Uh, sounds like a setup. Juvenile fight. Were they fighting on video? They left for two more. No, <laughs> no, I gotta, I want to go exercise a little and then go pick up Maddie. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 two more, no, two more hours. And I got to cook too. I'm going to cook. So I'm going to try to try this new thing. Oh no. Red table talk. <laughs> hey, Wendy. Most stupid criminals. That could be fun too. Like a stupid criminals thing. Yeah. we got to have like a night that we chill and have fun. Turned out to be three shooting, not three shootings. Really? Oh. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you, Miles, for coming through as well. Lexa, I know Jasmine's out there. Um, BL, BL2, and whoever else. Thank you guys so much for coming through. Air fryer time. I actually have to put something in the oven. I bought this um cauliflower thing that I guess is supposed to be like potato, but it's like cauliflower and has pieces of bacon and like some other stuff. And you just throw it in the oven. And I also have some um, ground turkey. I'm just going to, I don't know. I just picked it up. I'm going to cook that. <laughs> no, no. You're ordering those meals. They deliver and you cook it. No, I've never tried that. I, I mean, I'm not opposed to that because I'm just looking for something simple and affordable. I mean, everything's expensive now. Cauliflower. I wonder if I could pull it up. Maybe I should get off. <laughs> no, I don't know how to pull it up. I have it in my freezer. But I don't know how to. Oh, it's like, I guess it's mashed cauliflower. I guess it's supposed to impersonate potato, but I don't think it's going to come anywhere near that. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's like, okay, I'm going to show you real quick and then get off. Mm, it's like this one. Oh, does it have, I don't know if it has sour cream, but it's like chive. And oh well, yeah, it's not exactly this one because the one I have has bacon. But it's like something like this. I don't know. So I'm gonna just throw it in there. Bake. It said it says to put it in the oven. Everything's expensive now, man. I was talking to my barber today. He keeps wanting me to. Uh, he keeps telling me to do a video. I don't want to do a video because they know I do YouTube. 
but he was telling me he's been doing ordering takeout every day and he's spending like all this money like hundreds of dollars and he's like he's gonna start cooking now so fried cauliflower i never thought about that i never tried that that sounds good not wrong with a bit of starch with me it is <laughs> cauliflower pizza i want to try that too supplements are very expensive that is true i spent a lot of money on supplements um but yeah i'm out of here thank you guys so much for stopping by love you hit like on the way out appreciate the support take care of yourselves and we'll see what pops up tomorrow manana and be safe a lot of crazy um unstable evil people out there all right peace